Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with honey mustard roast chicken. That's right, not only are we doing a super delicious and super easy recipe for roast chicken, I'm gonna show you how to do one of my all-time favorite poultry techniques. And not just favorite to do, favorite to say. And of course, I'm talking about spatchcocking. Okay, there's a reason for that old culinary school saying, if you start by spatchcocking, your chicken will be rocking. And this one certainly was. And to get started, we'll go ahead and mix up our marinade in a nice large, and as you can see, a very experienced bowl. And we'll begin with a whole bunch of yellow mustard. And if you're noticing sort of a two-tone effect, that's because I finished off the squeeze bottle of one brand and then started another. But anything will work, including Dijon. And then to that, we will add the honey of our choice or the honey of our honey's choice, along with some rice wine vinegar or any vinegar. And then we'll also do a nice squirt of hot sauce, in my case, sriracha, which means we don't really need any cayenne. Sorry, kids. But we will add a little bit of smoked paprika, also known as the bacon of spices. And then we'll finish up with some freshly ground black pepper and, of course, some salt. And that's it. We'll simply take a whisk and give it a mix. And once combined, our marinade is done. And we can move on to the aforementioned spatchcocking. And what we'll need is one large whole chicken. All right, something between about four and a half and five pounds is perfect. And what we'll do is flip that over breast side down so we can identify the backbone which is very easy to find since it's right in the middle. And all we're gonna to do to remove that is take a pair of scissors and cut along either side of it, starting at the tailbone, going all the way up past the neck. And yes, of course you can do this with a knife, but I really do find the scissors a lot easier. And so as not to waste meat, make sure you're going as close to that backbone as possible. And that's it, once that's been removed, we can go ahead and do a little trimming of any excess fat or skin. At which point we will switch to a knife because what we'll do is find that cartilage right in the center, right where that V is formed where the wishbone comes together. And then using the knife, we'll make one shallow cut right through that cartilage. And then by pressing down on either side, the chicken will flatten out and that breastbone should reveal itself. And if you have to make another little cut in that cartilage to make that happen, go ahead. And then once that happens, we can just run our fingers along the breastbone until the rest of the cartilage pulls away, which is gonna allow our chicken to sit nice and flat as it roasts. Speaking of which, I think it looks a little nicer after it cooks if we remove that flat part of the wing right at the joint. All right, that's definitely optional, but I do think it looks better. Plus, we can take those and the backbone and make a little bit of stock. So I do like to cut those off, but you decide. I mean, you are after all the Larry of your bird. And that's it. We'll go ahead and transfer that into the bowl of marination. And we'll toss it around until it's very well coated, including and especially any and all nooks and crannies. And it was right about here when I remembered something we should have done on the cutting board, which now I'm gonna to have to do in the bowl, which is much harder. And that's take a sharp knife and make a few shallow cuts into the thigh and the leg. And also if you want near those wing joints. And not only will that allow the marinade to penetrate better, but those are also the spots that take the longest to cook. So by doing this, theoretically, it does cook a little more evenly. So please do as I say, and not as you just saw me do. Do those cuts on the cutting board, which is way easier. And that's it, once that was completed, I continued on making sure this was well coated. And if you're wondering, do you have to do those at all? Well, no, you don't have to do anything, but I would. And then once we feel like that's been sufficiently slathered, we'll make sure we end up with the breast side down, at which point we'll clean up the edges of our bowl a little bit, and then transfer this into the fridge to marinate for anywhere between four and 12 hours. And if you are going overnight, you might wanna cover it, but I was only gonna do mine for like four or five hours, so I didn't. And then what we'll do once we pull it out of the fridge is transfer it onto a foil lined baking sheet, of course with the skin side facing up. And do not under any circumstances throw away that excess marinade. All right, we're gonna use that to baste with and also use that as a sauce later. And at this point our bird is ready for the oven, although I generally like to sprinkle on a little more salt, so I did. And that's it, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 50 minutes or so or until it's whatever you would consider safely done. And then what we should do while it's roasting is transfer any of that excess marinade into a small saucepan and maybe thin it out a little bit with some stock you made with the wings and the backbone that you had simmering while your chicken was marinating. And all we have to do here to make this safe to use as a sauce is simply bring it up to a boil. And really that's it. That is now perfectly safe to spoon over our chicken later. But before that, let's go ahead and use it for a little bit of basting. Since after about 40 minutes or so, your chicken's gonna start getting dark in certain spots. 
mostly because of the caramelization of the honey. So what I like to do for the last maybe 15 minutes of the cooking time is give it a nice basting with our sauce, formerly known as our marinade. And that's going to protect those spots from getting unpleasantly dark. And also, of course, build up a nice glaze. And you can do this as many times as you want, although I only did mine twice, like I said during the last 15 minutes of cooking. At which point it looked like this. And then what we'll do once our chicken is cooked to perfection is take that same brush, but this time we're going to brush over any of the rendered chicken fat that's on the pan, along with, of course, any accumulated juices, which is going to shine this up beautifully, and also, of course, add a little bit of flavor. And while I do this, let me go ahead and give this a turn so you can appreciate its beauty from all angles. And by the time we finish that, our chicken will have perfectly rested, and we can transfer it to some kind of serving platter, possibly with some roasted potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And I went ahead and finished up with some sliced green onions, mostly because I had them, but also because they're good for you. And that's it, our honey mustard roast chicken is done and ready to enjoy, which I'm gonna do right here without even plating up. And that, my friends, was just a magnificent roast chicken, right, a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy, with a little touch of heat, plus that very, very subtle hint of smokiness from the paprika. So the flavor really was incredible. And of course, since we sterilized our marinade, we can go ahead and spoon that over as a sauce. And the big advantage of that spatchcocking technique, besides that it looks super cool and is fun to say, is that because the chicken lays nice and flat, all the parts cook nice and evenly, and the breast meat ends up just as juicy and succulent as the dark meat. So it really is a technique you want to master. Although, as you saw, there's not really much to master. Okay, all we're really mostly doing is a little bit of scissoring. Oh, and definitely feel free to double those marinade ingredients if you want to have a little more sauce on hand. And if you're wondering why I never plated up, it's because the sun was going down. And the light was perfect, so I didn't want to risk it. Plus, sometimes I like to pretend this is a normal size plate, and I'm kid size again. But mostly, it was the light. And if you think that breast meat was juicy and flavorful, just wait until you try that dark meat. Oh, and by the way, you know what else honey mustard sauce is good with? Roasted potato wedges and Brussels sprouts. So this really does work on every level. But anyway, that's just a bonus. The real point is how amazingly well this chicken comes out. And please do me a favor and eat the skin. It's like the best part. But whether you eat the skin or not, or whether you plate it up, or you just eat it out of the platter like a savage, either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.